Heidi ho you guys so I was talking on the phone last night to a good local friend of mine here in northern Arizona uh, his YouTube channel name is I think it's the off-grid homestead the mud puddle I'm not absolutely sure addle brain but I'll post a link down in the more info box for you guys and check out his channel he's got a great channel and post some great videos uh, anyhow he uh, made me promise that I would post a video on our rain catchment system so I'm gonna give you guys a lay of the land first I really got to apologize it's a real mess around our place right now we've got projects going everywhere clean up and, and just one project after another and like I, we've got construction materials stacked up everywhere and uh, so I hope you'll uh, look the other way when that comes when it comes to that but uh, maybe I can give you a, a decent video uh, this is the northeast corner of our place and uh, we had to build a whole bunch of fence for a dog run and stuff but uh, right there we've got a deck that starts and it wraps all the way around the back of the house and over to see if I can keep the camera straight yeah got a praying mantis or something crawling around on the camera to here and I'll show you more of it in a minute so the house sits basically on a cliff and it's way up high which comes with its own challenges but it's also way cool because we have some fantastic views from our deck up there so this is the opposite corner from that first shot I showed you this will be the let's see the southwest corner of the house and from under here you can see the house sits on an outcropping of bedrock and it's all these boulders and it may, that has its challenges as well but uh, I don't think it's going to move anytime soon the area is not known for big seismic earthquake events but I'd like to put some cross bracing between some of these posts under here for a little added support just in case at some point if you guys have any ideas on that let me know anyhow as you can see uh, we're on all these boulders which makes it really hard to set up a ladder or even a scaffold to put rain gutters up on the eaves so like I said the deck wraps around the back of the house that way all the way and right here it starts it's covered and I put this storm door in about a week ago because we're going to enclose all this but uh, the rain gutters start over there and let's see if I can follow them they go all the way around here I'm stepping over construction materials here and they go all the way down here and all the way to that corner over there because I can't put a ladder or a scaffold up and like I said folks I really apologize for all the mess but we're working and it's a construction area uh, because I can't put a ladder or a scaffold up I had to design a scaffold and build it out of wood that cantilevers off of the deck and I've got two 4x4 four four posts here and the deck floor joists are 2x12 so we've got uh, ratchet straps that go down and wrap around those and come back up hold these 4x4's four in place and they stretch out have to build the 
frame of the thing on top of it all. And then we've got ratchet straps up top here that wrap around the deck railing and wherever I can, around the post. So it makes a pretty stable platform, even built a handrail, to uh, work on the gutters. And once you're up here, the gunners are at just the right height. To, you know, the eaves are at just the right height to put gunners up. Okay, so the downspouts come off of the gutters and they go into. Let's see if I can come around this way and show you guys what's called a leaf eater. And they catch all the big stuff and leaves and dead bugs coming off of the roof and I think let me get into a little bit of the math at this point the house supposedly is a thousand square feet and uh, with all the decks I've been guessing that we've got maybe somewhere between 1500 and 2000 square feet of roofing so inch of rain uh, we should get oh somewhere between nine and twelve hundred gallons of water collected in our system uh, but once the rain comes through this leaf eater it goes down into a first flush diverter and this is just a piece of three inch PVC pipe and there's a rubber ball in there, or not rubber, but plastic. I'll show you. So, yeah, the water comes into the leaf eater thing up there that uh, separates all the bugs and leaves, and the water falls straight through the screen up there. And it comes down here, and we've got this, these long pieces of PVC pipe here. And down here in the bottom, there's an awful lot of glare on the screen on my camera so I can't really see this is made to screw off <coughs> tough to do with one hand and up in here <coughs> is a plastic ball that floats and it goes all the way up to a fitting in that T up there that is sized to fit it so the water fills up and this floats and once it gets up there it seals against that and keeps any floating debris in this pipe from from getting into the water supply so down here on the bottom there's a fine mesh screen on this little tube that uh, yeah now I got it in frame that uh, collects any small stuff and you can see we're collecting some dust and dirt and little tiny bugs and stuff in here I gotta clean this out let me see if I can screw this off one-handed if not I'm gonna have to put the camera down okay so on the bottom of here is a fitting and I'm gonna run tubing off from here over to uh, some fruit trees etc so that we can uh, make use of the water in this tube but there's a rubber washer in here with a teeny little hole I don't know if you guys can see it I don't want to blind you uh, anyhow uh, that lets the water out of this tube when it's done raining so that uh, it doesn't hold water and freeze but it's such a small amount going through that tiny hole that the water backs up in here. Uh, can I see my finger? And it goes, it gets diverted through that T. You know what? I'll go upstairs where I can see. So the whole idea is when you get a downpour of rain, the first 20 or 30 gallons that goes down this pipe 
in the first flush diverter uh, all the dead bugs and bird poop and uh, leaves we don't have leaves here but we have bits of pine trees uh, washes off and gets down in this pipe and gets trapped once the pipe fills up the ball comes up to about here seals against that fitting inside there and the water gets diverted through the tee through the tee and down this way and that's I, I put in some uh, clear PVC uh, tubing goes down. Let's see if I can come over here. Through that elbow. There's a T now. Another downspout or first flush diverter comes in from there from behind the house over there and connects here. And everything gravity flows with no pump down to a 2500 gallon poly tank. And we're gonna put another poly tank over beside it and that'll pick up some other gutters and downspouts and stuff from over there they're going to be tied together in a couple places so they fill up evenly and then uh, our water for the house comes from another poly tank I'll walk over there and show you we're back over on the northeast side of the house there's a fridge that I just put there this morning it doesn't work and we're going to bury it for a little mini root cellar right over here. But there's, you can see where the trench goes. And way up on the hill there is another 2,500 gallon poly tank. And I'm going to put two more up there. So between those three and the two down below, we're going to have, uh, what is that? Uh, 12, I don't know. I'll put it on the screen. Climbing up and down the cliff got me winded. I'm a little addled right now. So that tank is almost full. We got 1,900 gallons in there now. But uh, I don't know if you can see it on this. Let's see. See if I can get it in frame here. Way up there. And the water gravity flows down to the house. And then we've got a pressure tank in the house. Back off so we're not so shaky. Okay. So... Next spring, if I can get past the county inspectors and building department, I'm going to build a big carport over this RV, and it'll be double wide so we can park the tractor and side by side and everything under the other side, on the other side of the RV. But uh, we're going to build a, uh, it'll just be a shed roof, and it'll come down, and we'll have a couple more poly tanks on it with, uh, first flush diverters and everything and then those tanks down there and these here my plan is to be able to pump water up to the tanks up on the hill over there and uh, then it'll gravity flow into the house all together my plan is for 17,500 gallons worth of poly tanks, which is a lot, but as you know, mud puddle, uh, we get our monsoon seasons here in northern Arizona. Some clouds are building now. I don't think we're going to get any rain tonight. Uh, but uh, we get about, mm, what? Our average for our area is 14 inches a year. So that should be enough to fill all these tanks. So that's a pretty extensive system. There's a lot involved. Uh, Mrs. Goat Hall and I aren't using, we're using about 25 gallons a piece per day right now. Uh, we're using a lot of techniques to reduce our water usage. The average use of water here in 
the United States is 100 gallons per person per day. So we're at about a half or certainly less than a third of normal water use, which is a pretty good thing. Anyhow, it's going to cost us a pretty penny. I'm guessing probably somewhere between twelve and fourteen thousand dollars altogether, which is a lot. Even uh, well, ain't about more because we're going to add more tanks, so a little over fifteen. But I got some bids, or you know, rough idea, what it would cost to drill a well. And around here, they're having to go anywhere between four and 600 feet down into the ground to drill wells. Um, and they couldn't guarantee they'd find water, obviously. And the rough idea was about 30 to 35,000. So we're certainly going to save money. Water's all going to come free from the sky. And we're not draining the aquifers doing this. So it's all a win-win in any case. It's just a lot of work to put it all in. Anyhow, folks, I hope you enjoyed the video. Yeah, I'm going to post more. I'm going to do a lot of review videos because we bought a lot of equipment and stuff that I want to share with you and review. I'm going to concentrate more on uh, solutions because uh, the world's not great right now and I don't think it's going to get much better anytime soon. Uh, earlier this year we had about 20 hummingbirds coming up to these feeders. They're fun to watch. And they fight each other and squabble over the feed all the time. In fact, we've got to feed, fill the feeders. We'll do that in the morning because there's still a little bit in there. Anyhow, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Check out the Mud Puddles channel. He needs some subscribers. And uh, we'll get through this. <laughs>